Rita. This is Lisa. I am sitting here looking at your project and I've gone through and reviewed your comments and reviewed how the drawing aligns to what the assignment was. Really you've done a pretty good job. The layers are all looking good. The windows are all looking good. I spot checked a lot of them and they were in the right place and the right size so that was good. Um, you did note that you didn't have arrows or the thresholds on the on the plans because you spent so much time on the other things and so I, I circled those. One thing I will note is that uh, where on the PDF on the second floor plan they show a break line and a down arrow I don't always show it that way. A lot. I don't usually show a break line if I can see the stairs all the way down. I'll just pull that down arrow all the way down. Um, that's just a little different way of drafting technique. Those things vary a little from office to office. Both are correct, but I wanted you to have the choice. Um, so that's the things that are circled there. Now, you missed, in addition to this garage window, this one over here not a huge deal. Your bay window looked great. Uh, you've got a little drafting problem here. What's happening here, if you think about it, we built the shell of the house and then we built the partition inside that. So what we want to do is we want to clean this up so that we have the outside walls meeting like that and then I'm editing with grips here. That stretches back that way. So it's all nice and clean. Um, these doors should be on the door layer. That is one, the one exception to the you got everything on the right layer comment. Now then, um, looking at your door swings, they're kind of wonky. I'm going to go down here. This is where they're kind of the wonkiest. One of the things you need to make sure of, it looks like this door is bigger than its opening. So I just measured that. Okay, that's something you can do using the measure tool, which you can also access by typing DI for distance. Okay, and so I'm just going to measure this real quickly. And yeah, that's a four foot door in a, what size opening is this? Okay, in a three foot opening, so that's not quite right. Okay, but you can fix it. Similarly, you have here a door that is smaller than its opening, and you know that's not quite right too. So you can adjust those two things. What I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to show you how I solved this door swing question. I'm going to stretch this down so it's the right size first, okay? So that's, um, and as I mentioned in my uh, video for Tina, I'm a fogey, so I type everything. So I'm going to stretch this door down so that it is three feet and it's the right size for the opening. So I know it's four feet tall, so I'm going to type S for stretch. I encourage you to use these things up here, but I'm a fogey, so I type. S for stretch, I'm going to select the objects. You can see it says select objects here. I'm going to select the objects I want to grab. Specify the base point from there. And I want to go at minus 12, oops, I want to go in the x direction I want to go 0 and in the y direction I want to go minus 12. Okay, so now I have a three foot door. So the way I typically solve this problem of making the arcs, you can do it by using the arc tool. Okay, so take a look here, it's asking you for the start point of the arc, so pick one end or the other. And and then it gives you options. You can pick the second point, the center, or the end. So I'm going to pick the center. Okay? And the center, you've got to remember that what you're drawing here is basically a quarter of a circle. So 
the center is going to be at the other side of the door, right? So I'm going to type C for center. And here is the center. And here is the other endpoint. Ta-da! And now I'm going to use my match properties. And that's nicely done. Now another way to do that same thing that takes honestly just about as many keystrokes, I'm going to erase this so I can start all over again, is to draw a circle. Okay, so circle, C, I, and I'm going to draw it with the center here at the hinge point of the door, and then I'm going to draw the other point over here at the end point that is the other side of the frame, and then I'm going to do trim, and I'm going to select from my cutting edges the wall, and this, trim, and then match properties. Okay, so far as drawing your brake lines for your stairs, uh, take, take a look up here at Express Tools and it's got the brake line symbol. Okay, um, that does create a line that has the brake line symbol in it. Now see here, it gives you a bunch of options here that you can pick the size. It says brake line DWG is what the brake line is going to look like. Um, the size is a half inch. Okay, this drawing is going to be a quarter inch scale drawing. If it's a half inch in the drawing, in the real life world of the drawing, we're not going to be able to see it in real life. So what we want to do is we want to do S for size. Let's go ahead and make that sucker 12 inches. Okay, so now we can draw our brake line. Where is my... This is acting really wonky on me today. Um, there's the other line. I want the, the brake line at the midpoint, and there I have a nice break line. Okay, um, I'm trying to think what other questions you might have, and if I haven't addressed them, please let me know and I will do my best. Thanks so much for your hard work.